Welcome to the prenup. I'm Adriana, your host, and I'm so excited to share today's episode with you today. We have John and Pam of Three for Three Marriages. So if you haven't heard of Three for Three Marriages, it's a counseling service, premarital counseling and newlywed counseling. And I am such a proponent of this. Before I was getting married, I thought premarital counseling was honestly so stupid. I didn't think there was anything I could learn from a priest, a Catholic, um, that I would be able to apply to a marriage. What do they know? But even though it didn't touch on maybe everything that a non-religious counseling would, it really did bring to light a lot of issues that, you know, we might not have thought of. So I do recommend premarital counseling to anyone. And John and Pam are definitely great people to provide that service. If you're looking into it or just check out their content, it's all listed below. Um, they are so knowledgeable. They're so sweet and not that it matters, but they are super good looking. So you definitely want to check out uh, their pages and they do really just make you think in a different way than you typically would, which is really cool. Again, all their info is listed below, their social, their website, everything. So definitely take some notes on this. You're going to want to save it, send it to your fiance, a friend. Um, I'm really excited for you to listen and get some really great tips today. Thank you again to John and Pam for coming on and enjoy the episode. Good. I was just filling Pam in on my weekly breakdowns about uh, <laughs> not making the proper progress. I have the breakdown as well. <laughs> he has, um, his uh, alter ego name is Steve, my IT guy. <laughs> I'm like, Steve, I need you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But you know what? You need that balance, right? Like your IT guy, like sometimes your therapist, probably That's a right. little bit. <laughs> That's, my lover. That's right. <laughs> Most importantly, I'll just kind of get started by briefing where we left off. So you guys meet and correct me where I'm wrong, but you guys meet in college. John yeah. joins the cheer team to try to flirt with Pam. <laughs> um, flirt with all, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then you kind of get disconnected, you know, after college, you go your separate ways, get married, have beautiful children. And then down the line, you kind of find yourselves reconnecting via social media. Um yeah you go long distance. So you definitely have odds stacked against you, but everything is kind of like pulling you together. You know, you have this connection that's really strong and you want to see it through. So you guys yeah. get married fast yeah. forward to now, and you have this beautiful business three for three. So yeah. just talk a little bit about what three for three is for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah, go ahead. Well, three, well, I mean, it started with Pam because yeah. when she met, when we met, we were talking about kind of our fears having gone through what we went through and the mistakes we made. And we're kind of thinking that we were going to have to compromise somewhere, you know, when we met someone new, because we felt like what we were looking for, you just don't get all three. You don't get three for three. You don't get the emotional, spiritual, and physical yeah, at 48 divorcee, you know, with baggage. Yeah. At our age, we're yeah. just kind of like, you're going to find someone who's single, but they're mm -hmm. missing the others. Or you're going to find, you can find those qualities, but they're married, right? Why would Where they, they have like a missing tooth, you know, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something's going to be, some, you're going to have to compromise one of the three. It's like pretty much, or at least one of the three is what we thought. Yeah. Yeah. So but, that's kind of the genesis. So she actually bought me a watch when we were dating engaged and she had inscribed on the back three for three. And she yeah. told me the story of how she really is like praying to God thinking, I don't think I'm going to find that I'm going to yeah. have to compromise. And so when she met me and I'm not taking credit, like I'm just a normal guy, but yeah. God gave her odd vision. So she's like, she thinks, oh, great. So, uh, but, vision. but so she gave me that and <laughs> he was my three for three. So, you know, I felt like we, he was my person, like emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And we ended up just aligning in like every way possible. So I, that's why I joked around with him that he was my three for three. And so that's why mm. I inscribed that on the back of the watch. Oh, that's beautiful. And for anyone who's listening and not watching, these are two of the most gorgeous people you'll ever see in your life. So definitely uh, look oh. them up. John's just teasing um, about the odd vision. But... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so then you kind of decide what you want to instill because you had less than a perfect journey to get where you needed to go. You wanted to help couples kind of build that foundation before marriage so that they maybe didn't have to go through some of the mistakes you went through. That's exactly. that, 
that very yeah. sums it up very yeah. much so you absolutely yeah. nailed it and um the the other thing is is yeah we don't we don't want people to go where we've gone and had so much pain and suffering and it's some you know it's that legacy you leave your kids go through it we want to help couples avoid that because you in the beginning you're running off of you know these uh, like overwhelming emotions and feelings that that kind of blind you to some of the things that are really important to build a really solid foundation and it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're not going to have an amazing marriage yeah. but you have to you have to plan you have to be aware so that as you shift from feelings emotions into reality that you know what that means how do we navigate these different stages of life yeah. and and you can still have an amazing thriving marriage all the way through i mean you're going to have bad days yeah but you set the you set the structure you set the foundation so that when the storms come you guys lock arms and you battle it out and you chuckle your way through it you know yeah it's it's so important to be able to navigate that together and you know when you're when you're planning a wedding sometimes there's um I don't want to call them superficial issues, but you know, you get into little squabbles about, you know, what you want the flowers look like, things like yeah. that. But, you know, yeah. you kind of forget like real life happens after this and right. we need to be able to navigate that together. So I actually put out on my Instagram and my TikTok that you guys were coming on and I had a few people writing questions and some of them had different and specific scenarios, but a lot of them were very similar foundational issues. So, mm -hmm. um, one of them was um, the transition from dating to marriage. So some people, you know, you run the gamut, you know, how long were you guys together before you got married? You knew each other forever, but four years. Yeah. We've four dated years. Okay. Do you think there's any kind of general real difference between going from dating partners to marriage partners? I definitely do. I, I want to hear well, parents for I mean, what my just right off the top of my head. The, my perspective is that dating is really about getting as much information from each other as you possibly can. Because once you pull the trigger or get engaged and you're planning a lifelong marriage, I mean, your goal is to kind of know what you're getting before you get there. Um, I think that's one of the things that gets missed a lot of times when we're like, oh, he's so hot, like, and he's a good guy. So, and he loves his mom. So good, you know, <laughs> kind of deal. But I think that, you know, knowing your, his family of origin and like, what do you expect from me as a wife and what do you expect from me as a lover and all of the things that we kind of talk about when we go through the sessions, we really delve into all of that. Like who's going to do the finances and am I going to have to sneak my packages in, you know, leave them in the trunk and hide them when he gets home, I have to like shuffle them up to my closet. All of those things, not like we expose anything because that's kind of real life too, but it's um, it's important to know what you're getting for him to also know what he's getting when, when you guys are picking each other for the long haul. So the day that you say I do you should be marrying your best friend. You mm -hmm. should be marrying your, you know, your lifelong partner and, and not have any surprises along the way. So that's definitely that's, that's a big transition. Um, that's the transition that is huge. And then once you're married, I think that's, you know, you already, you already have each other. Yeah. For the most part, you kind of know at that point, it's interesting yeah. that you say that because my husband and I were together for a long time. We lived together for a short period, but there was a lot of talk about like, oh, when we get married, we'll do X, Y, Z. And it's okay. kind of these big picture plans, okay. but we, we never really talked about how that's going to work with the financials of things. Okay. And right. I didn't expect to, you know, start a business or renovate a house, which we're doing both now. So it's like yeah. these, you need to have that really strong base so that when you are hit with these rockets that you're like, okay, well, we have each other. We know each other. We can at least figure out how to navigate it because life throws curveballs all the time, right? Um, yeah. yeah. And I mean, even knowing how each other responds to those things, like you said, you're building a house and all that. And those are some of the most stressful times ever. You know, a lot of people joke that if you can build a house together, you're going to make it forever. <laughs> so I stressful. Think that's true. <laughs> it is. And I mean, just knowing that like, you may have your hot buttons and he may be relaxed on something. Him knowing that up front 
is, you know, he can give you the grace that you need to be able to freak out over tile. And he'll be like, you know, we're going to cut you doing it. This is the budget or whatever it is. But just knowing some of that stuff, like how each other reacts to certain things before you get to them is also just a huge, um, a huge learning that will really help you through your lifetime. Yeah. I like that. Like just knowing, knowing your partner, knowing the triggers that it's yeah. sometimes it's not personal. It's no. just, it's just them. people. Yeah. 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 We're all going to cut differently and that's what makes it so beautiful, you know? Absolutely. Then, you know, to your question is like, how long do we date? You know, what, how, what's the optimal engagement? When should we get married? I yeah. Kinda, do you have an answer to that? I do. It, it really depends on how honest we're being with one another. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, yeah. <laughs> Am I dating your social media person or yeah. am I dating you? Are you going to reveal to me your authentic self or am I going to have to wait six years for incidents to pop up for me to see who you really are mm -hmm. as circumstances arise? And so the more honest and transparent we can be out of the gate, I think you can figure out very quickly yeah. if someone is going to be a compatible friend and lifelong partner. And that's the other part I think that's common. I did it. So I'm not like looking down on anybody when I was younger, but it's kind of like, Oh wow, we have sexual chemistry. We have fun together. What else do I need? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> you think when you have fun with someone, that's the end all be all, but you know, there's so much more that that goes into it. And it sounds trivial, but at any age it doesn't matter if you're 21 or 61 when you're getting married, there's this chemical that is just kind of there. It's I don't know, it's like this feeling that you have and you know, love really just does take over a lust and yeah. it can kind of blind you to reality. <laughs> that's exactly, does. yeah. That's, <laughs> we did a post, I did a post on, you know, premarital sex. Look, I, I did it. I'm not, again, not, it's no judgment. It's just sure. aware of the power of that. Yeah. And it really confuses you. You're yeah. not really able to look at things objectively because that is such a power. It's literally a chemical, you yeah. know, launched in our brain that we, we were not seeing straight. Combined. Yeah. I saw that post and I thought it was really interesting. Can you, can you talk a little bit, just touch on that, you know, just your stance on premarital sex, again, not a judgment on anyone who does it, just, you know, a viewpoint of it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, God made sex. It's like the most awesome thing ever, right? It's this sure. thing that is this great uh, potential for intimacy between two people. And if it's, I think it's used casually, it's, I, I frame it up as it's like, we have this glass of water. We, we get to fill it, it comes full. And this is our capacity for intimacy with another person. And if we're flipping about it and we go about life going, you get a little, you get some, you get, you get some, you get some. And then we meet the person and we're like, okay, I want you to be my, my life partner. And all we have left in the cup is this. Mm -hmm. Then that's our capacity for intimacy, and you can refill it. It just takes a massive amount of real hard, hard work and therapy to restore what is sometimes casually given up. And so there, there's the two aspects of it: it's that element, and then it's the fact that it it clouds our judgment as to who is this person. Because look, I got to tell you, for 99% of the people, the two parts are going to fit. It's going to feel amazing. <laughs> Sex is going to be. So, it, but you know, if that's your driver, like, well, this sex is me. Well, yeah, of course it was. You're too, yeah, yeah. we're two horny young people. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And some of, to your point, some of the worst damage that can be done is really under the surface and those things that, you know, you don't, you don't really know why, but it's because you've kind of given that intimacy and that piece of yourself to maybe someone else who, who hurt you. And now you kind of can't give all of yourself yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, exactly. you're along with you, but, no matter what you, you, you know, intimacy is intimate for a reason. I mean, sure. and you unfortunately, and fortunately carry each and every person that you have been with to the next person, like emotionally. Yeah, so, definitely. So so something, why, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Pam. Go on. No, I was just going to say, that's why we never judge because of course we've made, we've made every mistake that we, we um, talk about. Like, so everything that we try to help people with, I think we've done it all. So it's coming from experience in a place where we wish somebody had set us down and just given us options, you know, just told us some of these things that could have been helpful down the road yes. for us not to have the experiences and the heartaches that we did. So we definitely don't want anyone to think that this is a judgy thing or that, you know, it's, 
it's a, a life ruiner because it, it's not, but it's just one of those things that we feel is an important option for people to have. And, and the reality is, is like, we're, we're, we're young and, and people, you know, you were engaged for a long time. People are dating a lot longer. They're staying engaged a lot longer, a lot, you know, it's different geographically, but in general, you know, people are waiting longer before they get married, which makes it harder, right? Yeah. To wait longer to have sex. You know, I get it. I mean, it's like, so the reality is probably most people that might be listening to this podcast are engaged and they've had sex. So now what, what do we yeah. do? You have to peel back the onion. You, you have to really get to know one another yeah. and not leave any nook and cranny untalked about or you know we really you really need to know who that person is going to be because the ideal place we want to get couples to is that you're 60 and 70 you're you're going to get pie in the morning and you are just deeply in love and you're probably not even having much sex yeah that's yeah. what we need to think about is who who do i want to be with there mm -hmm. when when sex isn't the priority and and other things are priority it's the really the companionship yeah. it's the friendship it's the ability to laugh together, to, to find joy and have common interests and passions, you know, those are the things that are important and we're hoping we can help steer. Yeah. It's know. such a good point because you're not going to be hot, young, sexy forever. You need that partner who's going to be with you and be for you through anything. So um, just to kind of get to that point where, you know, you're seven years old and you guys are, are getting pies. I think there's a lot of things that need to go into that first to figure out, you know, obviously you guys can help with that. But one thing that people have issues with, not only in wedding planning, but in just relationships in general, but a lot of times it happens with planning, especially when it comes to family members and in-laws coming into the mix. Oh, yeah. So how can you draw boundaries with each other and with the outside world? So boundaries as individuals and boundaries as a couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's easy in the laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. I guess I mean, you know, it is easy. It's easy to draw those boundaries and say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. But sometimes it can be hurtful. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to be by myself for, you know, two hours. I want to do my facial routine and listen to some music and, you know, and he doesn't take offense to that. But sometimes if he does the same thing, I'm like, oh, well, my feelings are kind of hurt. You know, you know what I mean? So how can you draw those boundaries in a loving way with each other? Well, yeah, I, and, and there are definitely tools and techniques that work, right? It just takes it takes um, a few things in place. So first off, I'd say we are individuals, right? Mm -hmm. You're you, your husband's himself. And it's when we cloud those to say my inadequacy or the things I haven't sorted through are now upon you. I need you to fill those, fix those for me somehow. It's never going to work in the long haul, right? Mm -hmm. We have to understand ourselves to say, hey, if me and my wife and we have issues with the in-laws and it's because I'm not putting the priority around that I have to be myself, I have to circle me and my wife. We are a circle. That is the next priority. And my family and everyone else falls outside of that. So if anyone is putting anything at jeopardy with me and my wife, that's that's a no-go. Mm -hmm. That is, hey, you said something to her it was offensive to her and therefore it's offensive to me. Yeah. And so we love to spend time with you. Your family are very important to us, but if that continues, we're not going to be able to spend time with you. Yeah. Yeah. But wow. It's, it's just that. And now some people, if you grew up and you have this enmeshment with your family where it's, they haven't really, the person hasn't really separated to say, I am me and you are you. And yes, we're related and I love you, but we, we have our healthy boundaries. Yeah. If they haven't done that, then it's more difficult, yeah. right? Because they're yeah. they're going to start emotionally penalizing you and putting and insulting you and threatening you. Well, we're just not going to be able to have you over for the holidays, I guess, then anymore. I guess we're not going to see your kids. And they do this, they either become the victims or they become the aggressor. And you're just going, what's happening? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Do you think it's a threat to to family sometimes? Like they're losing someone when a member becomes a unit with someone else? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
100%. I mean, it's when your dynamic changes in a family, good or bad, um, there is a little bit of, it's change, you know, and people just don't really like change. And to think that if someone's becoming a unit with someone other than you and you might lose them, there's that fear that comes over, especially parents. I have two sons and a daughter and one is going to get engaged soon. And I'm like, oh, I, I have that fear that's come over me thinking, I bet he's going to spend more time with her family. Like, that's just a, a thing that has come across my mind. Now, I love their family and I of course. love his pick and everything. It's just, I don't want to lose out on, on time with them. So I think it's kind of a natural thing. It's a motherly bear type of feeling or fatherly bear. I mean, I, I think it goes all different ways, but that's why when to become one, it starts with them and the boundaries have to be created within that unit, within that couple, because you have to protect that. We talk a lot about keeping hedges around your relationship because unfortunately, besides the family, there's so many things that can tear that down. Mm -hmm. Family, I don't think intends to be tear down, no. but you have a lot of pressures from a parent or from anyone in, in that sisters, brothers, that you're feeling could jeopardize your relationship with your significant other, it already starts as an uphill battle. For so sure. talking about the boundaries within your relationship is so critical to protecting it. Yeah. And you think you should touch on those boundaries, you know, with your family, do you think it's better to wait until an issue arises or just say, Hey, upfront, this is kind of how we're going to absolutely have our family moving forward. I yeah. think so too. Anything yeah. you can do up front with love though. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a spit down, like we're not doing this. And <laughs> right. Listen, she doesn't like, you know, it doesn't have to be out of that kind of um, temperament. It needs to be out of kindness and love. Like everybody wants to protect the ones that they love on both sides. For so sure. saying that like, we're going to have Christmas at our house and then we're going to make time for all of you as much as we can. So this is the plan. And it's a non-negotiable. As long as you guys have decided and agreed upon it, um, then that's really the most important thing with with consideration of, of those that you love. But it starts with you too. Yeah, definitely. I well, agree with kind of proactive approach, especially with, with a wedding. Because you know, you and your spouse, you know the dynamics of your parents, right? Sure. You probably can fairly accurately predict where there might be some drama <laughs> or if there's competition between the parents, another common dynamic, right? The one's like, why that happens. She go pick out this and why didn't I get to it's trying to preempt that and go all right let's divide this up let's be very clear mm -hmm. hey we want everyone to participate this is not about any of you this is actually about us let's remember right. we love you we want everyone to enjoy it and we want to be fair and equitable here's what we're thinking we're thinking hey you get to help do this you get to help do this does anyone have any questions does that <laughs> does anyone want to swap roles yeah you know? yeah definitely like making people feel or making family members rather feel like they're a part of your new unit because I hear a lot of people say nothing changes when you get married. And even my husband even says it. He's like, yeah, nothing changed. You know, we live together. I'm like, no, everything changed. You know, we're, we're a family now. So, you know, as much as our families knew and loved us as individuals, we are different people now because our priorities have shifted. So, yeah. you know, it's not that we love them less or we want them in our life less. It's yeah. just that things are different and it's a good thing. It's not, it's not a bad thing, but yeah. it can be a little unsettling to someone you knew your whole life. Who's like, who's this new thing? What's yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little threatening. They don't want to lose you. You know, I, right. I get it as a mother, you're just like, I don't, I don't really want to cut all the apron strings or have you go off and do your own thing, but it's a beautiful part of life. That's like a, the mo the biggest achievement that you can have as a parent is seeing your kids thrive. And um, so we just try to structure that, let the couples know how strong their relationship is and how their legacy will be passed down the same. So. Definitely. And I think a lot of couples who are getting married, you know, they don't, they don't have that foresight because a lot of people don't have children yet, but not only did you guys have the background of having been married, but you also have children and you kind of have this idea in your head of like, okay, I, I get what it's like to feel like, you know, you're maybe losing someone or they're changing or you watch them grow, but um, it's definitely good advice from people who've, who've been through it and have so much experience, not only 
in, you know, marriage with each other and, you know, mistakes in the past, but also intertwining children in that because there's a lot to be learned even to people who aren't having children or stepchildren in the mix yeah. from people who've had children in a marriage. Yeah. It, it is. And that's one of the things that we do as well. We're getting ready to start a whole curriculum about kind of the lifeline of, you know, before you get married to getting engaged to being married, what it's like to introduce um, work work in there. Like you may have a boss babe and then she turns into a mother and then she gets depressed and she, you know, I mean, there's all these steps that we've kind of lived through. That's kind of when we realize how old we are. But um, <laughs> we look back and we're like, oh yeah, remember that or remember this. And um, so we're starting, um, John's writing a curriculum on kind of the lifeline, what you can expect in your 20s, what you can expect in your 30s as you're doing your career and there's pressure on the husband or the wife, whoever's the working or both. And just all the steps that you may or may not go through from even postpartum and all those things so that we can prepare you through the journey and um, whether you go through that step or not, but you're definitely going to have friends that do. Yeah. And, you know, look, knowing sometimes what you may be in for before you get there and how to, you know, achieve success at going through it yeah. is half the battle is just knowing like, okay, I remember somebody told us this was going to be an issue. Now, what did they say about this? Um, you know, you plant the seed and put it in there and that way you can recall it. But that's that's hopefully what our, our goal is as we get a little bit further on with John writing the curriculum is to kind of prepare people from all the way to empty nesters. So That's amazing. That is, it's so helpful. I mean, I'll admit I was the first person, I'm Catholic, as uh -huh. is my husband, and we had to do pre and premarital counseling. And I was like, this is so Stupid. Yeah. What is what is a priest gonna tell me about yeah. you know our relationship? Yeah. No anything. But mm. I it was, it was really, really helpful. It made us think about things that we probably wouldn't have thought of before, even yeah. though we had been together for so many years. There were a couple of things though that, you know, because it is Catholic and it's like the Catholic yeah. bubble, there's maybe a little bit of more judgment on certain things. Yeah. There would be dealing with two people who have a lot of life experience who don't have judgment and just want to, yeah, you know, impart wisdom on. Yeah. yeah. And skills. Like it, like once you are having that, you know, knockdown, drag out fight, which, you know, life happens no matter how much therapy you have, um, how to come down from that, how to deal with that, um, without, you know, damaging each other. Cause uh, I mean, once words are spoken, words are there forever, no matter how much you love each other. So without trying to drag each other down, we're trying to teach skills on conflict resolution and how to have a disagreement and maybe never agree, but how to have a disagreement and still love each other through it. And totally. so it's really skills that I don't think that we were ever taught. Um, I mean, we may have been taught after we went through it all and had to be <laughs> it's on therapy. Yeah, they taught yeah. therapy down the road, but but Absolutely. knowing in advance um how to just have these basic things as as of conflict resolution. I think it's one of the number one things that people want to talk about, um, is just vital. And we wish that we could have learned that. And that's one of the big reasons that we were so passionate about teaching everything that we've learned, everything we read, everything that we've attended as far as seminars go, we just want to like throw it out. This is not new information. We're just right. of like the best authors and the best seminars and all of that. So. Oh, I love that so much. Okay. So, um, on to, um, something a little, a little lighter. <laughs> um, do you guys have any favorite tools or practices on dealing with a partner who's just really getting on your nerves like maybe they have a habit that I'll I'll use myself for an example just not to be controversial um I am a hurricane I leave a mess in my path I have been nicknamed hurricane uh through jobs whatever I I just have this thing where I'm like oh yeah I'll get to it after and then at the end of the day it all gets cleaned up so it's not in practice that it's happening 
it drives my husband nuts. He's <laughs> asked me a million times, can everything just go back in its place? <laughs> I am just not really wired that way. It has caused frustrations and I try, but then I always kind of revert back. So <laughs> I certainly have some work to do there. But for someone who's dealing with something like that, just a really annoying habit of a partner, what's a tool or skill that you would recommend to them to um, kind of suggest or lead their partner in the right way of maybe bettering themselves? <laughs> like, honey, yeah, I, yeah. Just think. <laughs> I have some, I mean, it's, it, well, of course it's going to be compromise sure. um, and it's going to be love, compassion, um, and there are some tools, right? Perspective is a giant one. So I had um, my own, my, not, not, it just doesn't sound as terrible as you were, Adriana, but my ex <laughs> I really am the worst. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I think yeah, it's a common, I, yeah. it's very common with women, but the, you know, to be frank, it's like you have a lot more Stuff. things. Mm -hmm. Like for, you know, she. I know he's talking about my makeup right now. I know in his mind he's talking about my stuff everywhere. You, just you don't worse. look the way Pam looks by just waking up in the morning. Uh, less, and less no, that is what she looks And then like. I'm really yeah. jealous. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. Stunning. No. Stunning. No, I mean, it's you have a purse. It's filled with stuff. We don't have purse. I mean, a man bag, maybe. Maybe. Sure. But you got <laughs> all the makeup, all the. Okay. We don't have that much. We just don't have as much stuff. So. Some of it's perspective and us needing to respect, hey, we're, we're two different people there. Um, but the compromise is trying to find, are there spaces where you can be a hurricane and are there spaces to him that are important? Like for me, I don't really care about the bathroom, you know, have your makeup. I just like the kitchen. I like, I like, and that's my thing. Like sure. his makeup is something different or the other person may be something different. So it's, it's very important that you both feel heard mm -hmm. and respected. And the most important thing about being heard is not refuting or defending anything until they kind of run out of words. <laughs> I love that. Yes, it's it's hard to remember, but it's really important to remember. Listening, right. hearing someone. If someone feels heard, let's say they're at a you know a ninety out of a hundred. If you just if you do nothing different and you make and they really truly feel heard, like they feel like you understand their position, it'll go to fifty. Oh. without changing anything wow wow that's huge try it it, it will it will if you're just like i'm so sorry what about <laughs> it about you and you and he's like well there's stuff and then i tripped on the thing and i fell and then it been like have i done this a lot you do it all the time <laughs> how long have i been doing it you've been doing it for six years uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I my stuff everywhere and it makes you feel this way like reiterate what did you hear how you, you're telling them what they told you Yes. Totally. Wow. Totally. And they're like, oh. I love yeah. that. I love that. Um, <laughs> and before we run out of time, I just have what I have. I have three more questions for you and they're, they're fun questions. So I just want to make sure we don't run out. Cause I think we have like five minutes left, but um, what's one thing that you really wish newly weds or newly engaged couples knew just if you had one, piece of advice or one thing that you wish they knew going into marriage there's so much <laughs> I, um i can't do one i can do two i'll try and okay. make it five minutes one is you know hedges around your your relationship mm -hmm. in a world where everyone's friends with everybody and anything goes and we're all connected in every which way and there's 20 ways to you have to protect yeah. your relationship. And so our advice for couples is you don't have same-sex friends. Mm -hmm. It's super hard. Like that yeah. is it's such a controversial thing. But... No, I don't think that's that big of a deal. <laughs> like if you had them before, okay. But like, we're not making new same-sex yeah. friends. It's so dangerous. not necessary. Yeah, it's it's probably one. And we, we go into a lot of detail about that, but mm -hmm. it's, and it's customized based on who you are and who your friends are, but. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just a best practice because here's yeah. how if you want to look at the, if, you know, because we've been we've been exposed to, you know, infidelity and all that, the and you when you research it, where does it come from? Where do those people, a lot of them are friends, a lot of them are couples friends. They're from, totally. You know, so we have to, we can't be blind and think, oh, we're different. We're special. That will never no. happen because we all have bad days. We have weak 
periods in our relationship where we're not feeling connected. And if you start leaking that to somebody else under the wrong, you know, after a couple drinks and the right circumstances, bad things happen, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so it's that boundaries. And, and so part of that boundary is I'm always going to bring, if I have an issue with Pamela, I'm going to bring it to Pamela first. I so love that. Go to and leak all this onto without talking to Pamela. And that doesn't mean I'm a close friend that I talk about. Maybe I talked to her and I'm not super happy with how it went or I want to get advice, but that's a close friend. It is not ever a tearing down of her to anybody outside of mm-hmm. our marriage. That's really good advice. I love it. All right. And then my last three, um, these are these are more just fun ones. So um, I sent these to you guys, but um, if you had to pick a honeymoon recommendation, any destination, what would be the honeymoon destination? <laughs> hard one because um, we loved Lake Como. I mean, oh. it's not a ton to do there, but it is so romantic. I oh mean, my God. About sitting on the balconies with the wind blowing in your hair and you're eating pizza and drinking wine and Stop like that. it. So We're fun. planning our September trip. So you need to oh. send me racks. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think Lake Como was probably on the top of our list. Love it. Okay. Um, what is your dream wedding cake flavor? anything with filling like we love like we're kind strawberries of strawberries and cream yeah anything like yum like anything with buttercream and yeah <laughs> sounds yeah. so good <laughs> but any actually that's our problem any cake <laughs> any, any cake sweets. bring it yeah. i know i have such a sweet tooth too um and then what song do you guys need to hear at a wedding we love Abe Parker's Butterflies. Um, have you heard of Abe Parker? I don't he, know that song. No. Instagram on our Instagram three for three, and um, it's but it's on our reel, and it's just like blown up. And he's he's a new artist, but he, that's my favorite wedding song right now. It is oh my What genre is it? It's kind of um. I would I don't know what I would call it. It's like sweet romantic. I don't know. He's just. I don't know how to, not bulky, but he's yeah, kind of, but it's beautiful. Oh, I'm going to listen to it now. Yeah. Go out. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, you guys, this was so fun. Thank you so much for coming on and thank you for all the advice. I would love to do it again in the future. Yeah. Um, but you have to let me know when that, um, that course comes out that you're writing so we can yeah. promote that and, um, all of your social, your website, everything is going to be linked so everyone's going to be able to find you and see your beautiful faces and hear your awesome advice so really really appreciate you coming on thank you for having us such a pleasure we love your fight all right you guys see you